I have a feeling that in the next election, you could be swamped with candidates, but you're not going to be wasting your time. You'll have plenty of those Democrats coming over, and you're going to say, no, sir, no, thank you. No, ma'am, perhaps, ma'am. It may be Pocahontas. Well, that was President Trump more than eight months ago, predicting Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren may run for president in 2020. And now it appears that just might be the case, with reports suggesting she has made a series of important moves that could position her for a run against her nemesis, President Trump. Carl Rove is founder and advisor to American Crossroads. Mark Thiessen is an American Enterprise Institute scholar. Both men served under President George W. Bush and are Fox News contributors. And every time we showed you guys during those teases, you were laughing and having fun, <laughs> you know. So let's keep this going. So Senator Warren, Mark Thiessen, is this, yep. this going to happen? Uh, it's entirely possible. I mean, look, I think the nomination is Bernie Sanders as if he wants it. Uh, the Clinton machine is dead. It's his party now. And so if he wants this nomination, they're going to have to rest, wrestle it from him. And look, he's a year younger than uh, Joe Biden, who everyone's talking about as a serious candidate. So he's not too old if he wants to do it. Um, but if, so she won't get into the race if he does. But if he doesn't get into the race, then I think she is, quite frankly, the heir apparent to the to the Sanders movement. Um, and I think she would uh, she would take it to take the uh, she would be a real contender for the nomination. Uh, she's a little bit different uh, from from Bernie Sanders in the sense that she's not a Democratic Socialist. Until the 1990s, she was a registered Republican in the state of Massachusetts. She says she believes in markets and she believes that the Republican she left the Republican Party, she says, because the Republican Party abandoned markets and got into bed with big government and big business to rig the system against the little guy. That sounds a lot like Donald Trump. Uh, so it would be a very fascinating clash of, uh, of, of populisms. Enter if, if Karl Rove. War. Your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree. Uh, I, the minor disagreement I have with Mark is that I think that she may say those things, but I don't think she believes those things. If you look at her sure. legislative career, she may not run as a democratic socialist like Bernie Sanders does in Vermont, but she is a democratic socialist in her behavior in Congress and in the things she espouses. But I think he's got it absolutely right. Bernie Sanders represents that sort of uh, populist wing of the Democratic Party. If he runs, he represents All that right, wing. Right, so you both agree run, she, she could she run. Could. It's, it's a good possibility she Absolutely. could run. But can she win, Karl Rove? Well, I, the, the, look, the general election is several geological ages away. And I think it all depends <laughs> upon, it, it, it all depends upon, you know, it, it, where is Donald Trump's uh, favorable rating if he does run? If it's at 35 to 38 where it is today, then she's got a shot at it. If he is either not in the race or he improves his favorable rating, so it's up in the 40s, uh, maybe 45 or 50, yeah, he, then then he can beat her. But uh, it, it's a long way between now Come and then. Come on, Carl, look, you and I so both know. It's right around the corner. There. Who knows? You know, so if it's not her, say it's not mm -hmm. her, although you're both telling me it's the likely situation that she could run. If it's not who, who else, Mark Thiessen? Who's... Who's on the bench? Well, you've got you've got, uh, you've got uh, candidates like uh, like uh, uh, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and Deval Patrick, uh, who are all out there, and they would have the advantage of being both articulate uh, sp uh, speakers, but also uh, they would be able to uh, they would be arguably because they're African Americans, they would appeal to the, the to the African American community and bring out that that Obama coalition. I think the sort of the dark horse. Uh, front runner would be Sherrod Brown of Ohio. If Sherrod Brown wins his reelection uh, in 2018, he's a he's a progressive populist from from a uh, from a key state in Ohio uh, who knows how to who championed the wh the white working class that abandoned who did who voted for Barack Obama mm -hmm. twice and switched to Donald Trump in 2016. The key for the Democrats to win in 2016 is to find the candidate who can win the, back those Obama Trump voters. There are millions of them. There, there are hundreds of counties that voted twice for Barack Obama and then switched to Donald Trump. If they if they have any chance of winning uh, that election, they've got to find somebody who can appeal to them and it might be Right. Somebody like Sherrod Brown. So you don't have to look far to see Mitt Romney in the headlines right now. Carl Rove. Orrin Hatch announces his retirement, and shortly after, Mitt Romney issues a statement congratulating him. And everybody says, okay, so is it, uh, it going to be Mitt Romney? Well, Romney's very popular in Utah because uh, of the family's long association in the state and his uh, personal involvement in the Olympics. Lives in uh, Park City outside of, uh, outside of Salt Lake. 
And so, yeah, if he decides to run, he is he he, he is very popular figure. There'll be he'll have he'll be challenged for the nomination if he if uh, if he does run. But my sense is is that he'd be enormously popular. The church, uh, the LDS church, would be largely behind him, and uh, the stature that he would bring to the Senate would cause a lot of Utahns to come out and support him both in the primary and the general election. Ah, but the big question mark: Would he align <laughs> with Donald Trump? Yeah, I, th I well, look, you know, I think I think he would be, but I think uh, it would. In order for Mitt Romney to lose, we'd have to get Steve Bannon to find another alleged sex predator to to run against him, because that's the only way you're going to lose the state of uh, of Utah to to the Democrats. Uh, so I think I think Mitt Romney w w is is very much the likely nominee, and uh, I think it's a good it's good that uh, that Orrin Hatch decided to step down. He just look, he's had it. He's been in Washington since 1977. Uh, he just passed the first tax reform in three decades. He repeated the Obama individual mandate, uh, and so it's. Yeah, I think it's time for him to step aside and uh, and uh, and call it a career and, and make way for somebody. Carla, like Carla, it seems like you were trying to jump back in there. Well, look, I, I, I do think that uh, Mitt Romney's an adult, so I think if he were to be elected to the Senate, he would find ways to cooperate with the president when sure. they agreed, and if they had disagreements, he'd be respectful about it. Mm -hmm. And and like like Mark, I'm, look, I, be, I was involved in in, in Orrin Hatch's 1988 campaign as a youngster. Known him a long time. He's a wonderful human being. I'm glad Agreed. he's going out on a high. He exactly. has passed this major tax reform legislation. He's got a lot of other accomplishments under his belt. He has done a magnificent job for the country and for the state of Utah. And I'm glad he's going out on a high note. I, I can already picture a lot of the words that Mitt Romney, choice words Mitt Romney had for Donald Trump back then that would then come up, right, Mark? Oh, absolutely. I mean, but uh, the, I mean, the reality is, I think Donald Trump is probably going to have to go out and support him because he's going to be the nominee, and mm -hmm. the the presumption is to work together. I don't think I don't think Mitt Romney is going to be going to Washington to stop tax reform, to stop uh, you know the growing economy and getting the economy moving again and undermine the Trump presidency. Uh, he's going to be going there to get conservative things accomplished, and and you know right. even the senators that Donald Trump hates the most, like Jeff Flake and and Dean Heller, vote with him 95, 96, right. 97 seven percent of the Good time point. and I think Mitt Romney would vote with him 96 97 percent of the time Mark and Carl happy new year good to see both of you Thanks. same to you